And so it seems, Your Honour, the Defence Counsel would have you believe that this was not a premeditated defence, nor a coldly calculated murder, but a crime of passion, a momentary lapse in judgment. Objection, Your Honour. Overruled. But I would put it to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that this grievous, heinous and thoroughly nasty business is not a case of impulse, nor a matter of lapsed judgment at all. No, no, in fact, I would put it to you that it is, in fact, Crowley time. Hello, and welcome to Crowley Time with me, Tom Crowley. With me, Tom Crowley. Like many people, you might have recently felt like you are too productive, too contented, taking too much joy in the world around you. This state can often leave people with a strange nagging feeling in the back of their minds, as if to say, Hello, I'm that awful thing you've forgotten about, or I'm an important thing you're forgetting you were supposed to do. Scientists have found that this state is much worse than actually having something concrete to worry about, or grieve, or slave away at. Something you can put a name to. Something you can hate. And so, if you find yourself miserably happy, I personally recommend social media. Not all social media, of course. Some social media contains jokes, or worthwhile causes, or some form of art. No, the social media recommended for maintaining a normal mindset is what's called purposelessly unpleasant social media. Leaving angry comments on posts by celebrities who will never see them. Arguing politics with accounts whose profile picture is a football or a character from a Japanese cartoon you can't identify. Making broad declarations about what groups of ordinary human beings are cunts or fucking cunts if you're feeling spicy. Spending a good half an hour staring at endless feeds of fury, or just five minutes several times a day, gives you something to grab onto and throttle with the dying gasps of your energy. You know what's out there lurking in the shadows. You have seen the worst aspects of our human nature, displayed so perfectly that it might as well be an encyclopedia definition. You know what hatred is, and you hate it. You can't focus on your work, you can't express yourself to your loved ones. You can't even poo properly. Back to normal. So, if the following program makes you too happy, puts a spring in your step, takes your mind off things, then I recommend purposelessly unpleasant social media. Nothing you say matters, and nothing will be achieved. You're welcome. Now, here's the opposite of that. Bon voyage! Oh, oh, thank God. Excuse me. Afternoon, sir. Oh, oh, officer, you have to help me. I've just been attacked. And where did this incident occur, sir? Just up the road, that way. Mm, just up the road, sir? Oh, it was uh, just outside the uh, uh, the uh, um, the, uh, the estate agent, um, near the bank there. Barclays Bank, sir? Yes, that's it. I know it. And just who was it who attacked you? Oh, th this man. He looked like he might have been homeless, possibly. He was dressed all shabby, but oh, I don't know. Can you describe him more fully, sir? Uh, uh, long hair, uh, dark but greying. He had a, a stubbly beard, a dark blue puffer jacket. Anything else, sir? No, 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 I can't remember. Well, look, 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 mate. Calm down. Tell me what happened. <sighs> well... I'm on my lunch break from work. I'd just been into the bank. I had to make a withdrawal. Uh, I was going to go to the jewellers. It's my wife's birthday next week. All right, mate. Do not feel life story. But, 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 officer, come back. Unbelievable. Here, yeah, get over here, you tasty little bastard. Oh, God, he's back. <laughs> yeah, you better run. Hello, this is Crowley Time with me, Tom Crowley with me, Tom Crowley. We can't take your call at the moment. Please leave your message after the tone. Actually, I think you'll find that the Doctor, the titular character from Doctor Who, can't be a woman, according to a peculiarity in Time Lord chromosomes during the regeneration process, which is discussed very explicitly in an extremely entertaining novel, which I wrote in the back pages of my computer literacy exercise book in 1997. 
Hello, my name is Wingnut. I am a five years old boy and my mummy says I am very clever but I have to stop putting my feet in the marmite. Welcome to Ask Wingnut, the program where me, a five years old boy, helps you with your problems. Our first letter is from Martin, aged 41. Dear Wingnut, I have recently been promoted to a senior position at my firm. The position comes with a small pay rise but significantly more responsibility. I am glad to be making more money for my family brackets, wife and two children close brackets but the increased workload means I have to spend more time at work and less time with them. What should I do? Well Martin, when my daddy has to work late in the evening I sometimes go into the living room and chew the cables on the speakers. So you want to watch out for that, thank you. Now we have a letter from Deborah, aged 30, from Wolverhampton. Dear Wingnut, I am not sure what to do with my life. I studied sociology at university but have only worked in hairdressers since graduating. I sometimes think about retraining as a lawyer but the course is very expensive. Do you think I should switch tracks? Well Deborah, I go to school at St Crab Meets Primary down the road and the lessons are very boring and my daddy says it is a, a shithole. But I do not mind to go to school because at school I can see my friend Jerome who has a very nice yo-yo and a lunchbox with Finding Nemo on it who is my favourite. Hope that helps. Finally for this week we have a nice letter from Switchblade Harris, 28 years old, who is a criminal. Dear Wingnut, I have recently been let out of the nick after copping five years for selling weeds. I was gasping to get out of that hell hole the whole time, but now that I am on the outside, I find myself missing the order and structure of life in Chokey. I cannot get a job because of my record and it all just seems like chaos out here. Sometimes I think about doing a crime just to get sent back. What do you think I should do? Well, Switchblade Harris, I used to live in a small prison that was called my cot. My mummy and daddy said that I was big enough to sleep in a grown-up bed, which is very nice, and my blanket has stars and planets on it. I would not like to go back to my cot because my legs are too long now, and mummy says when I slept in my cot. I used to do poo in my nappy and she had to clean it up. Now I never do poo in my pants except for the one time on the motorway which we don't talk about alright? Thank you for all of your letters. I have enjoyed reading them and now I have to go for a nap. Otherwise, I get grumpy. Next time, I will be joined in the studio by Joe Rogan, who will be sharing his feelings on artificial insemination. Night-night, everyone, 
And please, never, never be mean to people or kill yourself. Thank you very much. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. All right, all right. That's enough, God, for you. You're Oberst Schwarzblum. I'll say one thing for you Nazis, you certainly know how to make a chap feel welcome. Shut up! Ah. Now, for the last time, tell me the maneuvers of your unit. We know you are plotting an assault on Caroman base. We know you entered France covertly with 18 other special operatives. Now we need to know only where they will strike, and when. Gosh, <laughs> terribly sorry, but my memory is letting me down somewhat. Gottfried? Fetch the very long needle. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, best good. Gottfried likes the very long needle. All right. All right, I'll talk. God damn you. Good. Gottfried, halt. We... We dropped over Plummer two days ago. Tompkins and Willis bought it on the way down. Dodgy shoots. We regrouped at Lorient at 0700 hours. All right, mate. I didn't ask for your life story. What? Gottfried, throw him in the pit. Yeah, the pit! What? No, but, but I'm talking, I'll, I'll tell you everything! No, please, please, no, no! If you're following along correctly, you should now have your left knee tucked neatly into the nape of your neck beside your right shoulder. It's at this stage you should be aware that you look like a complete tosser. If you came home from work one evening to discover your wife in bed with the mailman while also printing seditionist communistic propaganda leaflets from your home computer as your six-year-old child plays unsupervised with a straight razor in your backyard, what would you do? That's just the question that faced Marvin Glick, 39 years old, as he entered his Cooksdale, Oklahoma home that warm July evening in 1979. What Mr. Glick did at that moment would change his life forever. Well, well I was... Flabbergasted. There ain't no other word for it, besides bamboozled or gator mangled. I just didn't know what to think, so I just walked back out the door and wandered across the road. Enter Hillary Larson, 23 years old, from Lakeside, Missouri. Ms. Larson had arrived home that same morning after a coffee appointment with a girlfriend to discover her own father firing a shotgun repeatedly at a tree in their backyard and calling it a son of a bitch. When she questioned her father's behavior, he simply replied that the men who live in his hair had told him that the tree was reaching its roots under the house and was poisoning their water tank. Ms. Larson found this explanation incredible, not least because she knew their water tank was in the attic. Rather than calling the police or a gardener, as you or I might do, Ms. Larson got back into the family sedan and drove far, far away. Well, you just don't know what you're going to do when you're faced with a situation like that, and... And what I did was, I just drove. I just drove and drove. And then I got gas, and then I drove. After five hours, Hillary Larson was still driving, with no care of where she ended up or when. Which is how she found herself on Maple Street, home to one Marvin Glick. Enter Captain Harold Rasmussen, 52 years old, an airline pilot from Settler's Wheel, Texas, currently flying an internal route from San Sebastian, California, to Hardupsville, Kentucky. This is a route I'd flown somewhere between 20 and uh, 102 times before, so, uh, yeah, you could say I knew what I was doing, yes, sir. On an otherwise completely ordinary flight, Harold was suddenly struck by an overpowering fear that he left the plane's iron on. The bosses at the airline liked us to have real crisp, uh, presentable uniforms at all times. So they provided a steam iron and a trouser press in all planes. And I just, uh, I became convinced that I had forgotten to turn that iron off. Captain Rasmussen asked his co-pilot to keep control of the plane while he walked all the way to the back of the craft to check. It was when he had passed between first class and coach that the plane suddenly went into a 90 degree nosedive towards the surface of planet Earth. That's when Rasmussen remembered that his co-pilot was dead. 
There is no real surprise. My co-pilot, Derrickson, he was in his late 80s, maybe even 90 at the time. Not really someone who still ought to be flying a plane, to be honest. He had passed away peacefully in his sleep uh, somewhere over Amarillo, and uh, I just plumb forgot about it. With nobody at the controls, the plane plummeted directly downwards, speeding towards Cooksdale, Oklahoma, pointed straight at Maple Street, home to one Marvin Glick. Enter Big Steve Tedeschi, a local Cooksdale resident who had recently bought himself a ride-on lawnmower and wanted absolutely everybody to know about it. Since purchasing the mower, Big Steve had taken to attaching fireworks to the rear of the vehicle and driving up and down one particular road as the fireworks shot off one by one, roaring, I'm the mighty mower man, look at my mighty mower. That road was Maple Street, home to one Marvin Glick. So, what happened next? From what police were able to piece together from witness testimony, it seems Marvin Glick, stepping off the pavement, was hit in the left flank by an illegal screaming violet firework fired from the riding mower of Big Steve Tedeschi. As Glick turned around to berate Big Steve, he was struck at high speed from behind by Hillary Larson's car. Glick was thrown 30 feet down the road, knocking Big Steve off the ride-on lawnmower in which he took such pride. A now enraged Big Steve began kicking and punching Glick's limp body, much to the horror of Ms. Larson, who attempted to pacify Big Steve by driving her car directly at him. It was at this unlikely moment that Glick's wife attempted to entice Big Steve into bed with the offer of a pamphlet about the economic theories of Friedrich Engels. The mailman was there too. This was the point at which Captain Rasmussen's airplane smashed directly into the ground in the exact spot that these five citizens happened to be gathered at that exact moment. So far, no big mystery. An elderly co-pilot, a distraught driver, a new lawnmower. The one question which eludes authorities and insurance investigators alike to this day is, how can it be that everybody involved in this tragic accident was absolutely fine? I had a few cuts and bruises, but nothing too severe, oh, thank goodness. I passed out shortly before the plane hit, and the next thing I knew, the ambulance guys were there, and they're yelling at me, saying, get up, you're fine, come on, we got places to be, hurry up. It's just one of those things which I can't explain, and maybe I'll never be able to explain it, but somehow God's grace protected us all that day, and I will never forget it. The persons involved in the events on Maple Street, including the 40-odd passengers on Rasmussen's plane, are alive and well today, and are all married to each other. They also perform in a family jug band. But just how did these people escape the clutches of certain death on that fateful day? Police were baffled for decades, but believe it or not, we at this program think we have the solution. By coordinating the plane's flight plan and consulting archive DNA evidence, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. With the cooperation of the survivors, we were able to uncover the astonishing truth. That All right, mate. Didn't ask for your life story. Oh. And release. There. Can you feel it? The tightness in your chest has been relieved. Your head no longer hangs heavy. Your hands are somewhat less clammy. Now, let's open Twitter. <laughs> ah, back to normal. Don't forget, next time you feel a carefree sense of wonder at the world, there's always purposelessly unpleasant social media. Politics, social issues, gender issues, mental health, they're all up for being obfuscated and turned into some kind of blood sport. And the really reassuring thing? That once you're finished screaming into the void, you'll be too sapped of energy to do anything about these issues in the real world. That'll save you some time for the gardening. To experience a conversation that's helpful and productive, check out this episode's supporter-exclusive bonus episode on Patreon. This time, it's a conversation with boy genius comedy writer Jack Bernhardt about breaking into comedy, writing sketches and sitcoms, and working with me, Tom Crowley. That bonus interview is available to all supporters now at patreon.com forward slash Crowley time. Also, make sure to check out Jack's new podcast, The Football Book Club, 
a brilliantly funny discussion of footballers' autobiographies. Recommended whether you like football or you hate it like I do. One of Esquire magazine's best podcasts of 2019 already. If you're not yet supporting Crowley Time on Patreon, please consider donating $2 per episode to help me make the decision to stay indoors and record this stupid, stupid program more often. And to gain access to all bonus material past, present, and future. Once again, that's at patreon.com forward slash Crowley Time. If you're not in a position to give me money for some reason, you can still help. Please consider telling a friend about the show via whatever method of communication you enjoy the most, or leaving a nice review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podclasp of choice. It really does help. The next episode will be released when pigs fly, or at least learn to jump further than four meters. So make sure to subscribe, so you'll be alerted at the precise moment that happens. Everything you've just heard was made by me, Tom Crowley. Please submit all praise, questions, or complaints to at a Tom Crowley on Twitter. To help me build a really big laser for carving obscenities into the moon, go to patreon.com forward slash Crowley time and become a supporter today. And remember, if at first you don't succeed, it's probably because someone somewhere is plotting against you. Find out who that person is and destroy them. Oh, uh, hello. Yes, how can I help you? I've got the latest Crowley Time episode for uploading. <sighs> right, give it here. Oh, thanks. I'm glad to get this out there. I moved house a couple of months ago, so the last episode was... All right, mate, didn't ask for your life story. Oh. <laughs>